Hey everybody, this is John with the Active Towns Channel and I'm in Denver, Colorado today and I have a special, special guest with me, Nicole McSpeed. Hello everyone. Nicole, where are we right now? We're in front of Union Station, um, <laughs> one of the living rooms of Denver. Yeah, yeah, So fantastic. yeah, we have uh, some protected bike lanes that branch out from here. Yeah. We're gonna explore a few. We're gonna explore a little bit. And uh, we met right in front of the little splash pad there. It's such a special little uh, public space as well. Uh, for the audience, why don't you just uh, do a quick introduction? Who the heck is, is Nicole? <laughs> I'm still figuring that out, even at my age. Um, I uh, work as a, a crossing guard for a local elementary school. I've been an advocate for active mobility for many years and just really working um, hard to, to make Denver a better place to get around without a car. Fantastic. And what are we going to see today? Well, we're going to see some protected bike lanes. We're going to see some shared streets, some completely car free um, areas. And um, yeah, some of our new um, and kind of inspiring infrastructure. Fantastic, I love it. Okay, well, let's go do it. I love this the way. fact that this is back in operation. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So cool. Yeah, um, we need to make it a little bit more people friendly. Yeah, yeah, um, but you know, yeah, that maybe will come. Yeah, and I don't know if you've seen the plans to make uh, Wincoop actually a car light. Oh, so, okay, um, it's going to be kind of looks like a curbless design. Mm -hmm. Um, only kind of drop-offs and um, access to parking lots, uh, ah. but all this would be more of a pedestrian area. Oh, wow. So um, there was a, a, yeah. a study done about eight years ago, right. and they kind of said this is what should be done. Yeah. It hasn't been done yet, <laughs> so I think they're doing now another study, but yeah. um, I think it, uh, we're all in agreement that that's what this area should be. I think that that's such a good point too because you know when you come out of such a beautiful station like this, a central station, and you are greeted by a whole bunch of noisy automobiles, polluting automobiles, it's not your best foot forward as a city. Yeah. And you know some of my favorite European um, central stations when you get off and it's just a, a wonderful car free environment and it's silent. You know, it's yeah. it's so Instead wonderful to have that. Instead of listening to yeah, all no, this. we didn't hire him to be here yeah. right at this moment. And, and we definitely could use some more trees um, yes. and just more seating yeah. area. Yeah. So we're we're hopeful that that actually gets um, implemented sometime soon. Yay! Okay, let's roll. Okay, here we go. So yeah, this is one of the newest, uh, 17th mm -hmm. Avenue. Okay. Um, it's protected for the rest of the way. There were some issues with the uh, hotel. Okay. That uh, made this area not protected. Yeah. Should we do a Colorado safety stop? It's already, uh, we're gonna oh, be yeah. able to get it now. <laughs> there we go. Almost. I forget about that too. <laughs> Well, and sometimes in a busy... Sometimes you're sitting there, you're waiting, and you're like, oh, wait, I can I go. I can go, I know. <laughs> and then it's other times like, yeah, I don't want to have to look and see if someone's coming down. Yeah. So we're going to take a right here, and okay. the bike lane is on the left-hand side. Okay. So this is Blake yeah, Street. We, and we do have a bike signal here. Oh, yeah, they've got a bike which signal. It's kind of hard to see if you're... Yeah. If you actually get into the bike box yeah, here, you can't see it. So a little bit uh, of a challenge in terms of placement. It is interesting too, so we're gonna be taking a right mm -hmm. across the way there, right? Right, yeah. exactly. And so, going back to our Colorado safety stop law, what's the, what's the, so the, the etiquette now? If there is a, a bike signal, uh -huh. we're not allowed to go across on red. We have to treat it like that. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, it's one of those things that it's hard to kind of, when you have these little exceptions. Oh, and there's yeah. the bike lane over there, which is a little bit easier to see. Oh, so, but I don't we, know if, so we don't have to look at, the, I guess at not. this one. We can we'll also see, see that it, one. If, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it does. So that's our signal that we want to be but, focusing on. But then we also though have the pedestrian walk sign here, oh, which wow. kind of creates a little bit of conflict. Yeah. But that's okay. We can manage. We're not going to hit the pedestrians. Yeah, we're con conscious as <laughs> right. riders. We're not. We'll we'll we'll, we'll be very very uh, kind to manage, our, yeah. our fellow brethren in <laughs> active mobility. 
And we can see the new Zikla, they're not all that new, but the, for us, uh, yeah. Zikla box yeah. that protect the stretch. Yeah. Fantastic. So, and this is, you can see, I don't know if you want to see a little bit of the, the um, well, it's all, not all that <laughs> finished. Yeah. But, yeah, so um, yeah, they've been working on redoing the 16th Street whoop, Mall for a while now. For a very long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is nice that uh, we will see it getting finished. Now, we can definitely use some more kiosks. I'm gonna come over just a little, oh, that's just, just plastic. I didn't know if it was a bump in the road. Okay, mixing zone here. We're definitely getting to the point where you feel like there's actually enough that it's a network. I was gonna say the same, yeah, it <laughs> it's really getting does. There. Before it was like jumping from one little area to another. Yeah. Very disconnected. We're gonna take a little right right here to okay. see one of our sh new shared streets. Okay. And you can see there too, the permanent bollards. Oh yeah. So we have Wow. Oh yeah, so there's the two-way over there. So we've got our two-way cycle yep. track here. Very nice. Yep. And I, as I recall, this was a recent uh, ribbon cutting, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, we actually had, I don't know if it was really the ribbon cutting, but... Um, Some sort of celebration, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I came, we had uh, the Dutch consulate in town. Right. And I think it was before this was really opened yet, right, but yeah. we kind of took them to see. And, yeah. Um, they were all very impressed, which is yeah. nice to see, but also like, ooh, we're far behind. Like if we're yeah. kind of at the top, yeah. the United States um, city is what yeah. the people are doing. Yeah. Um, it means we, we need to do a lot more work everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, both, <laughs> Um, Denver and Austin have had a long-standing relationship with the Dutch Cycling Embassy yeah. and uh, working on building out a Dutch-inspired network. So yeah, and there's um, really it, it yeah. makes sense. There's no yes. you know like sense in reinventing the wheel. Just yeah. talk to people who know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And again, here we have a, a bike oh, there's light. There's our light there. Um, we're we're just going to kind of turn around. Yeah. And come back. Um, and we can and take, this is really also a part of the university campus, too. It is. This is a huge connection for yeah. um, people getting downtown to the university. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So we can just turn around here. We're gonna do a little U-turn here. And some little tactile sensors yeah. for pedestrians. Woo! No, look, and look at this. This is just such it, a beautiful sort of entry into really the downtown is. area from the university campus area here. And... Uh, Wow, yeah. Much better. It looks so much better um, in person. <laughs> and it just, uh, it, it functions yeah. so much better too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see, but there would have been, I think there was three lanes of traffic. Yeah. Um, with a turn. Um, I mean, yeah. there's a few cars that come through here, but uh, it's not nearly the volume that was before. Yeah. And of course, we're waiting to get across a massive strode here. Yeah, spear. And, um, you know, and that's one of our, our big challenges, you know, in our cities yeah. in North America is even after we put in some nice infrastructure like this, we still have to make it across, you know, sure. some pretty dangerous strodes. Um, all in due time, we will get our own bike signal here and be able to get across. But ultimately, you know, for many of our cities, we, we need to sort of break that addiction for having yeah. these massive, massive multi-lane strodes yes. within our city environments. Well, and, and I think 
drivers will hopefully come to understand um, that adding these sort of uh, improvements um, creates so many options for people. Yeah. And it does get people out of cars. Yeah. I used to be someone who would drive almost everywhere. Yeah. Not yeah. too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fantastic. And then here is that. Uh, yeah, we can go a little bit. bit. I don't think yeah. we're really allowed to kind of. Um, well, it's ride certainly, through it's here, certainly but, pretty calm at the yeah. moment. So I yeah. would say that we're probably oh, fine yeah. rolling through. Again, in fact, I don't see any signs saying no cycling allowed. No, no. But, you know, for, for those of us in active mobility advocacy work, you know. Yeah, we try to make sure. Sense, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, don't I, I don't. Fast. I don't want to see someone yeah. going 25 miles an hour through right. here yeah. when people are trying to just kind of walk yeah. around and yeah. enjoy themselves. But if you're rolling down the street like we are at six miles per hour, which is essentially yeah. fast yeah. pedestrian yeah, exactly. pace, we're good. I, I love, love it. it. This it's is going great. on up here, but yeah, got some I people. think it's some fun. Some folks going out for a, pr nice. a tour or something. Yeah. Fantastic. Posing so, for a photo. We'll go. We'll go back and take 14th. Okay. I love the uh, activation of this street that's been happening over the years oh, with yeah. all the lights and the banners and everything it, here. It's, it's, and this is really how it should have been all along. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so when it finally became real, um, and we got real permanent infrastructure rather than uh, big orange um, barricades. Yeah. It made a big difference. Yeah. So sure. we're going to be uh, taking left here, uh, okay. taking the left here. Let's see, we've got the walk sign, so I think we're good. Yeah. Oh, here we Looks go. Looks like we are. Left here. Uh, and this connects like a lot of the entertain the, the theater district, mm -hmm. um, and it goes right down to the city and county building, which is where we're gonna end up on this little stretch. Nice. And as memory serves, um, you're not necessarily right, in this me. neck of the woods on a daily basis, correct? No, nope, this is probably four or five miles uh, west of where I live. Okay. But it's it's fairly easy, and um, I probably come. In fact, I know I come downtown quite more frequently yeah. now that it's made easy to yeah. do with bikes. I mean, driving downtown was never fun, right. especially parking. Um, so this just makes it much more accessible. Right. Uh, and it just keeps getting better. I mean, we still have some intersections that are problematic. I think uh, banning right turns on red would help a lot, as okay. well as enforcing them with uh, red, red light cameras and mm -hmm. speed cameras. Sure. But uh, but yeah, I think you know infrastructure is number one, and then some you know. Some things you can't like design away, like people running red lights, and I mean you can kind of slow people down to make it less sure. likely that yeah. they will run it. Yep. But there will always be people who yeah. decide, ah, that's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we we definitely need some automated enforcement rather sure. than uh, police officers hanging out. And I think the, really... you, you bring up a really good point too, though, is that if you really effectively slow the motor vehicle traffic down then there's going to be less of that sort yeah. of quote unquote unintentional red light right. running because Trying you're already up it. to speed, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's hard to react in the last moment, especially right. if you're not 100% yeah, sure. paying attention and a little bit distracted and you look Absolutely. up and you're like, ah, you're rolling through a red. Right. If you're going 15, 20 miles per hour in a, yeah. a downtown street, residential street, sure. which by the way, is yeah. the we should be going. Uh, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's a lot less likely that that's going to happen. Uh, absolutely. So what speed is not only, um, you know, good for lowering that um, that disaster level when crashes, but it, it prevents crashes to begin with. Um, exactly. You know, exactly. And it just makes our streets more friendly for everyone yeah. else, including other safer drivers yeah. you know, who don't want to, yeah. to be dealing with that any, either. Right. Yeah, such a good point. I try to bring that up all the time is that that's 
one of the great beauties of the 30 kilometer per hour speed that exists in um, many of the European cities within their urban environments is that these are collisions that never happen. Right. If they do happen, they're less likely to be fatal. Right. Um, but for the most part, they get, you know, the, the, the collision doesn't happen because Absolutely. there's reaction time to yep. be able to not have that Exactly. Occur. And yeah. you're, you're reducing volume yeah. uh, in the area. Yep. Um, so there's just multiple benefits. And, you know, there's just no reason to be going that fast um, in an area right. that's you know, densely populated. Yeah, if you're on the highway or whatever, I understand, like, you yeah. know wanting to, to go a little bit faster, but when there well, are Well, and that brings around, up the point we had earlier, which is there's no reason to be treating our urban environments and our residential environments like highways. Yeah, absolutely. Having highways rolling through them. And just, yeah, and making, you know, these uh, streets. Yes, we This is we a great go. light. I love this here. Um, as uh, frequent viewers know, I hate traffic signals <laughs> that have us stopping for no, no reason, apparent reason. I know. <laughs> it's my yeah. pet peeve. It so really fortunately is. in Colorado we can come to a stop scan and go. <laughs> exactly. There's no one here. We can treat red lights yes. as uh, stop signs yes. and stop signs as yield. Yes. Which seems to terribly confuse a lot of people why we have separate rules and someone driving a two you know two ton vehicle but yeah. when you think about it <laughs> It makes a lot of sense. We don't, don't have uh, the yeah. momentum. We have great visibility. We can hear. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's a lot of diff lot of reasons to treat. Yeah. Uh, cars and bicycles differently. Yeah, exactly. Talk a little bit about this uh, infrastructure that we're rolling down now. I know it's been in for a little while. Yeah, and it's great. I think it was one of our first with concrete, um, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's still like we've got these wiggle in and out. But you know, that, that does slow people down. Right. Um, so it's really, can't complain about that. It is nice, you know, I think, I think we're, gonna, we're gonna see that we're going to, uh, we're gonna need to widen these <laughs> lanes. Sure, yeah. Um, as we, you know, see more and more people riding. Yeah. Um, it just makes more sense. And you can see like, a lot of the width is taken up by the gutter. Yeah. And you know, just and avoid, trying to avoid other obstacles. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and I just want you to look up. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of our newer buildings called the Populous. Okay. So we're just coming <laughs> over here, and they're gonna have, you can see, the end of this goes oh, yeah. into a little cycle track. Oh, cool. Yeah. Excellent. So just when, open. so when the development um, permitting was happening, they made sure that they integrated yep. a curb level cycle path yeah. there so we'll come up Which, onto yeah, that you level. You can see the difference all this is older infrastructure we're just yeah. it's an afterthought putting in the bike lanes yeah. here it's being it's just being built so yeah. we know this is kind of the gold standard of what yeah. what bicycle infrastructure should be. Yeah. So I, I thought, don't know. I think it's funny too that we uh, once again we paused. <laughs> I know exactly. So there is a this is a little bit of a sharp entrance. Yeah for sure. They didn't quite get that design right. <laughs> right. And I'm not, I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, we'll give it a go. Okay. I don't know. We've got the pedestrian signal. Okay. Let's go. There we go. There we are. Oh, wow. So Look at this. This is in front of our city and county building. You'll be able to see the uh, Capitol building. Yeah. And so. But this is a Bannock shared yeah. street. Wow. Um, this is fairly new, uh, painted by local artists. Mm -hmm. um, we also have more signals over here. Right. But and then you can see the Capitol here. It's such a beautiful view. Yeah. On both sides. So we've got City Hall here, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, City and County building. City yeah. County, and then and let's then the swing Capitol back around. Building. Let's get another yeah. shot of the State Capitol. Yeah. So again, City County of Denver. City and county, beautiful public structure. And then of course, we've got our state capitol here. And again, this is a great example of, there's no reason to have automobiles screaming right. through this 
public realm. Right. This is for the people. It is. Um, and there will be food um, trucks and mm -hmm. other events that come out here. Um, and I think, you know, it's it's looking good. I think we need some mm -hmm. more planters and mm -hmm. stuff like that sure. and seating. Yeah. But um, it's, it's great. And there's another raised cycle track on this side. Yeah. yeah. Um, for when there are events here and you right. don't want to be riding through a whole bunch yeah, of yeah. people. Yeah, a whole bunch of people, yeah. So, but it's, it's yeah. a great, you know, way to connect this area too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you do see that combination. We've got the beautiful old historic trees here. We've got a great lawn area here. And you can see people, you know, congregating underneath the, the shade trees. And it really just kind of emphasizes yeah. how incredibly important it is. Ooh for us to soften up our Absolutely. cities and add more trees whenever yeah. possible. So Not only for water management, yeah. but for shade, for that urban heat effect, uh, heat island effect. Yeah. I mean, you've noticed, like, especially in, in Boulder and Denver, yeah. the sun can take a toll on you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like a heat lamp. Yeah, So, sure I mean, is. it could feel 20 degrees different yeah. uh, in the under, um, you know, under a tree. Yeah, well, speaking of which, let's keep it rolling. Yeah. Otherwise, we're gonna fry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we're gonna go take the 14th um, protected bike lane. All right. Which is just left here. Okay. Okay, I think we can get across. We're just going to go right over here. Um, and we'll be going down. This is the 14th Avenue protected um, bike lane. Uh, we'll be going down to Sherman, which I believe is. Um, a neighborhood bikeway now, at least they have some more pedestrian friendly, so traffic uh, slowing. Yeah, yeah and another silly light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're, you know, we're getting more of the neighborhood bikeways with traffic circles, speed cushions, diverters. We need more and more diverters, um, but we, there are, they are in the plans for numerous other um, bikeways. Okay. So it's, uh, it's coming. You yeah. know, we're, we're, we're getting some stuff done. Yeah. Um, and not that, you know, I think just like there are different kinds of drivers. Some people want to just get fast, you yeah. know, go as fast as they possibly can to get yeah. where they're going. Um, you know, and they have that opportunity with highways. Right. And, not everyone want, is, feels comfortable on a busier road on a, on a protected bike lane. Right. Um, especially if you're with kids or, you know, you're just kind of not a very competent rider. Yeah. Those uh, neighborhood bikeways really can be great for spreading out a little bit mm -hmm. more social riding, yeah. um, riding with families, but they do need to really kind of reduce the speed and yeah. volume of drivers to make it comfortable, yeah. uh, to make it clear that people have the priority there rather than drivers. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. And it's, uh, I like to say that it's it's not an either or. Exactly. It, it, it's, we need to be building the on-street facilities on the busier streets as well yeah. as the shared streets on those uh, low volume, yeah. low speed uh, environments too. So. We're not saying it's no, one's better than the other. It's yeah. we're saying yeah, we're both saying need to be done. different kinds of you know, yeah. there's different tolerance and desires for different people, yeah. um, and we should try to accommodate all those people. Yeah, um, especially well, and it just it, you know, you should be able to roll out your door and be yeah, able to yeah. get to wherever you need to get to. Exactly. You know, and not go on you know the map and try to figure out how to avoid this one intersection yeah. that I've had problems at before. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, um, now we just passed a really, really wide street in Broadway there, yes. multi-lanes, uh -huh. one way. We've got Another. Lincoln here that's yep. the same. Yep. We've got multi-multi-lanes, one way. They're not necessarily going high speed at this point in time, but because there's so much prioritization mm -hmm. of them, there's a lot of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, exactly. And you can tell. And if this is how you build your streets, this is what you get. Yeah, yeah. And you can also tell, based on the platooning effect, is that, you know, all we did was just, through the lights that we have down there, is create a big, huge platoon right. of cars, <laughs> making it seem like it was gridlock. Right. But in reality, just you, can, you can have several less lanes, yeah. a couple less lanes at least, Without and any still yeah, move the number of cars through yes. 
either with a different intersection design like We're gonna take a, a right low-speed roundabout. <laughs> exactly. Um, and now we've turned onto Sherman. Oops, a little sorry, shared there. street. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so we've just <laughs> turned, turned the corner. Turned Sherman, and you can see behind us, this is mm -hmm. one of the great things about um, Sherman coming north mm -hmm. is you get a great view of the Capitol Dome. Right. Um, but yeah, this is another, I wouldn't say it's really, I mean, it is a neighborhood bikeway, but it yeah. does need a few more elements. Yeah. But it's- Let's go ahead and pull the, off sure. to the side here. Sure. Talk a little bit about this. We're at Sherman and 13th Avenue here. Mm -hmm. And again, let's get this view here. We've got the Capitol right here in the middle of the street. And we see what, you know, we sort of talked about earlier, which is, using the lighter, quicker, cheaper, yeah. you know, materials in terms of really sort of cordoning off and reserving the real estate right. so that at some point in time when funds are available, we can come back in and put more permanent infrastructure exactly. into these places. And one of the things that I love documenting is when those transformations happen. And so we're shooting some video right now here at 13th Avenue in Sherman and hopefully we can come back, you know, in a couple yeah, of years exactly. maybe when, you, when the funding is available to be able to Absolutely. see that this has been either some concrete poured, um, we've got an opportunity to have and a shorter- And here, here, we have no turn on red. Yeah, we got the no turn but, on uh, red. We have this yes. incessant turning on red, which, yes. you know, people just come to expect, no one's looking for the, 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 yes. the sign. Yes. So we need some more, like to make these, um, these bikeways safer yeah. for pedestrians, for yeah. bicyclists, for other drivers. We need to kind of yeah. like make that so it's standard, yeah. not allowed. And we're out here roasting in the sun yeah. too. And one of the things that I'm looking at here too is yeah, we could probably do some concrete curbs here, but I also look at an opportunity for maybe depaving a little bit and yes. bringing some green elements to this environment Absolutely. as well. We see that we have a shorter pedestrian crossing opportunity here once we harden this environment. Um, so this is kind of exciting for me because oh, I love getting the before yeah, picture exactly. Let's hope and, <laughs> and do that. And I've documented several cases where we've gone, cities have gone from these flex posts, yeah. then they, they got some funds available either through ADA or right. whatever and safe routes to school funding and then been able to come in yeah. and do permanent infrastructure. And it's, it's easier when you've kind of showed them that the war, you know, drivers, that, that the world's not gonna end. You know, like, and most exactly. people are against this. I mean, no one likes the look of the plastic and the rubber curbs. And exactly, the, you know, yeah. But it is an iterative process. This is to kind of like, you know, see what works. Um, it, it's much cheaper to kind of change and tweak a little bit yes. um, if something's not working quite right. Yes. Um, and then before you put in the massive investments and the concrete yeah. and the bollards. And yeah. so we like, you know, just try to re like remind people yeah. that yeah. that's what's going on. Yeah. It's not going to be like this forever. It's not going to be like this forever. All right, let's roll. Let's Wait. get out. Let's oh. get out of here. It's too hot. Good timing too. Yeah. But see, this is 13th protected bike lane as well. Okay. So we have 13th and 14th going in opposite directions. Yeah, and I believe we do have a uh, traffic circle along here, but okay. again, like one traffic circle and a few uh, bulb outs, not quite enough, yeah. but you know, it's a start. It is a start and I'm noticing here too some uh, activities of yeah. creating some green space in here, integrating some, exactly. uh, some rain gardens, bringing in some rather large planting bays, hopefully to plant some trees. Exactly. No, yeah. I'd love to see that again. Like, uh, and a lot of you know, a lot of places we do have a good amount of trees, yeah. but in a lot of our areas, our trees are getting to the end of their lives. Right. Um, so we just have to kind of keep planting newer trees to to prepare for that. Yeah. And we see on this downhill yeah. here, we've got some folks who are rolling down. And again, as we're able to create a network that is safer for everybody, we start to see all ages, all abilities oh, of folks who are getting out. And here's what you're talking about. We get some more tree canopy. Yeah, exactly. And it makes a huge <laughs> difference. Yeah. Believe me, I feel that in Austin. <laughs> yes, <that's laughs> The true. tree canopy versus no tree canopy. Oh. oh, I see what you mean. Up ahead here, mm -hmm. we do see 
uh, a little traffic circle. Is this one of Denver's quick builds? Uh, it circles? is. So it is. It's not just the rubber curbs. That's mm -hmm. what they started off as. Uh huh. So we do need a little bit more daylighting at yeah. some of these intersections. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. Um, but now they are kind of, I think, rubber curbs filled in with asphalt. Okay. So I mean, they're still not pretty. They're still not exactly permanent. Right. But they're, you know, they're not getting ruined every week. Well, and, <laughs> and I would say this isn't the design I'd want them to do for permanent anyways. I just posted a whole series of photos from Boulder um, of traffic circles that have been in place for decades sure. and they have trees planted yeah, in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what we really sense. should be heading towards is a traffic circle. And one, yeah. one of the great has, things about this is yeah. um, not only does it slow down drivers, yeah. but I know I, like one of the big issues I have with drivers and feeling comfortable is a lot of times people will wait until the intersection to, yeah. pa to, to pass you. Where right. it's, it's not legal to do and it's not right. safe. Yeah. Because you know, if you have cars parked on both sides, but, that, but those traffic circles eliminate that. Okay. So it's, you know, it's one of those things like, oh, I don't have to worry about someone gunning it. Yeah. Trying to get past me in an intersection. Right. But like another, we could use another uh, traffic circle right here. Yeah. Yeah, here's, a, that's a, a, oh, some, some stop signs. Yeah, that'd be a great yeah. opportunity. And, and we've again, seen how, how they reduce T-bone crashes, the more serious yeah. head-on T-bone crashes. Yeah. You know, and there may be more crashes uh, in the beginning, but they're typically far less deadly or dangerous. Right. And this is actually a fairly new crossing here. Okay. Oh, look. Uh, we, we might not need it, but I'm just gonna test it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it worked oh. right away. Cool. So what Nicole's talking about is she actuated the lights by pressing a bike convenient button there. Yeah, that worked quite Yeah, it works. I, you know, I still have, like, warn people that um, I would make sure people are going to stop for you because yeah. drivers don't always see those flashing lights, especially, right. you know, like in, in, you know, busy times of day or, yeah. or even it's, not. It's not, a, it's not a stoplight. It's no. just a flashing yeah. um, warning. There's the potential of yeah. bikes and peds uh, up exactly. ahead. So, so this um, is a part of, this is the end of 7th Avenue okay. um, neighborhood bikeway. It changes a little bit here, but it's protected here. And this will be the entrance to the Broadway bike lane. And ah. I wanted to show you this because this little, this little jog here yeah. is, uh, could be really difficult. Like I, I could see this being a very difficult intersection to plan for. Right. And we're gonna stop here. Okay. But I, I really like the way this is planned out. Okay, um, yeah, so we've got clear. our diagonal lines going across the intersection. So we're gonna be merging yep. over to the left getting in a two-way cycle track, which will then get us to Broadway. Right. And we'll pause because that's noisy behind us. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have the advance with the pedestrian. <sighs> nice. Away from that rumble. I know. And again, we were talking about Broadway earlier. This was one of the two major couplet and it looks like we do have our walk that's good yeah. excellent so this is the very uh, northern part of this protected bike lane we're hoping to right. get it extended further okay towards downtown but right now it's a pretty nice long stretch right with uh, bike signals really nice hefty uh, concrete curbs um, you know the the intersections still could be problematic, but we have yeah. people waiting here, yeah. which is good. And we do it's have a light. Like we're gonna catch our light yes. just barely. <laughs> nice, nice timing. And uh, yeah, so that's this is new since last year because yeah, this is. is where Viva Streets was last right, year. Right, exactly. Um, and you know, this was in the planning phase for I think about a decade. Yeah. So um, and it's nice they. They bundled it with other improvements, like I think uh, 
water and electric and, and pedestrian infrastructure. Right. Um, so we're really good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a cheap cost, but it wasn't all for the, the bike lane. Right. But it's good, you know, if you're going to be tearing up roads, that's the time to and kind of have the kids can get to the wizard's chest. Oh, most important thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> so Hear no, that, kids? <laughs> you can get to the wizard's chest. Yep. Uh, but, you know, there, there had been years since I had really been down to this area because it wasn't really... Yeah friendly to bike to. Yeah. Um, let's do this. Let's pull over um, onto the sidewalk into that shade. Sure. And let's talk about this. I wanted to pause here because we were just talking about the wizard's chest. Definitely. That's a, a really meaningful uh, destination for many of the kids here. Oh, sure. Uh, throughout the Front Range uh, region. It's a lot of fun. Um, but it, it exists on a Stroud. Yeah. It exists on this monster, monster bit of highway infrastructure yeah. that's in the downtown area. And it's, it's notable that we were able to get a two-way protected cycle track onto this piece of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But it's not all that comfortable to ride in when you're being pummeled by the noise and the exhaust yeah, and of fast-moving traffic. Yeah, and you can see there's, there's still uh, three general traffic lanes and a bus lane. Yeah. I mean, before this was, this was even more. I mean, yeah. like, you know, it's, we still have room for improvement yeah. because of the speeds and just the volume. But um, yeah, it, it's, we didn't really take anything away from, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it, it didn't yeah. affect. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry watching a left hook there. Yeah. Um, you know, we definitely need some impro more improvements. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty good as far as width goes, um, but you know, we've seen during busy times, it gets a little congested on here. Yeah. Um, we've, one nice thing is we've, I've used this in our like snowstorm and a like freeze and rain storm and yeah. it's still manageable. Yeah. Um, because you're kind of in this protected bike lane. And yeah, yeah. You're not right next to traffic. Yeah. <laughs> like, so where if you slip, you're gonna be going into the traffic. Exactly, and it looks like the way that they've configured this, they've also retained some uh, parking too. Mm -hmm. So it goes into a phase of being a parking protected bikeway yeah. in addition to being protected Absolutely. by these rather wide uh, concrete slabs. You know, kudos on the city for doing that, exactly. making sure that they're nice and wide because that way the driver door doesn't swing and hit exactly. uh, somebody who's on a bike when we've got the parking protected. Protected. So, for cities around the globe, if you've got a monster strode like <laughs> this, you know, be brave. Take a couple lanes away, yeah. or at least one lane away, and reconfigure it. No, it's not super, super comfortable, but it's better than nothing mm -hmm. at all. And I want to point this out. If we come over here, come on over here, Nicole. Stand in the middle of this street, in the middle of this bike lane. And it's super wide. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that we end up getting is, is people saying, oh no, no, we can't do bike infrastructure yeah. through here. What about emergency vehicles? Worst case scenario, an emergency yeah. vehicle can literally roll right down here and we don't have to worry about no. an emergency vehicle hitting a yeah. per pedestrian or a bikes, person on yeah. a bike because a person on a bike can get out off of the way. out of the yeah. way so and much faster. Hear yeah, and so too. much faster than yeah. uh, a, a car because if, if this is gridlock because of an a, a crash, oh, emergency absolutely. vehicle can get to that much yeah, faster. Again. And again, to your cities, if you are considering putting in this type of infrastructure, make it wide. Oh yeah. And the other thing, great you know, advantage of doing that, like in a snow environment too, is you're more likely than not have snow removal equipment, equipment already yeah. in your fleet that can actually access yeah. this. Exactly, you yeah. do have to make, you know, pay a, you know, attention to the fact that you don't want it to look like another yeah. driving lane. Yeah. So why the, the, the markers are good, you know, like yeah. sometimes a flex post in an area that maybe can't be protected other ways, but like no one's gonna think, oh, I should turn here and drive yeah. down this yeah. way. You know, yeah. it's, uh, and this is why you also have these curbs here to kind of keep people from yeah. turning into here. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of little things, but they're really important things too. Yeah. We'll, we'll linger just a little bit longer sure. here to talk about this crossing. Again, we've got our wizard's chest right over there, and we've got our nearest crossing point um, You know, on this side of the intersection here. There is a, a light closer to the store there. 
But what we are still dealing with is a very, very long crossing distance yeah. for those pedestrians, those kiddos to be able to get across. Oh, absolutely. And uh, again, cities, if, you're, if you've got these monster strodes, be brave. Let's convert that to a two-way street, yeah. one lane in each direction. Uh, more than likely, you've got a couplet, just like this place mm -hmm. has a couplet. Lincoln is, is right over there. Right, exactly. And uh, cr you know, convert that also to one lane in each direction. Really frees up a mm -hmm. whole lot of space for active mobility. And we're able to do some bulb outs here and yeah. make that shorter crossing distance. Exactly, and if you've got a concrete protection, that does kind of shorten your distance. Yeah. Like on the other side too, This uh, I don't think this is parking over here, but on the other side, you know, the bulb outs yeah. that come out so that if you do have parking on the other side, you know no one's gonna be able to park in that spot yeah. and, and uh, reduce the visibility. Yeah. And you're also shortening that crossing for pedestrians. Yeah. So yeah. little things like that that, that make a difference. Because yeah. this still is not a comfortable street to cross. Yeah, but I mean, this is way a better. really positive it, uh, oh, yeah. iterative step. It's an Absolutely. interim step, hopefully for yeah. a and much I'm, more people-oriented yeah. street and for I'm the future. And I'm sure your, your camera caught that, but this person mm -hmm. just took a very nice slow left turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just so nice to see because mm -hmm. before, you know, you're just seeing these full speed turns yeah uh, and again you're just especially with the blind spots in many of the bigger cars these days yeah. you're just not going to see someone until it's too late yeah. um, so forcing those slower turns yeah are huge and that means a lot for you as a crossing guard oh yeah yeah i mean huge uh, and i've realized like how much visibility is just important because yeah. um you know slowing people down and and making sure people can see where they're going not only drivers but pedestrians yeah um, so it's you know to, to make everyone kind of more aware of their surroundings yeah and if you've got a visibility issue it's, it's you know it's again it's not an yeah. accident if something happens it's you know yeah. predictable because we yeah. knew this was gonna happen um, so it's yeah I can't tell you how yeah. important it is especially when you're talking about little kids yeah, yeah. who are not as visible as adults yeah. so yeah. yeah huge huge part of safe streets yeah so Nicole, um, earlier you were mentioning, you know, how important it was for those slower uh, turns, those slower speed turns, and it and it makes me realize that we've had some new concrete work done here, and we can see that this has really been moved out quite a oh, bit. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, like this, and so part of the reason for that nice slow turn is by design mm -hmm. they have made this a much safer intersection yeah, absolutely yeah and you get like the little tactile cues if yep. you're driving and you're you cut it a little close yeah yep. you get that you know that uh, little bit of reminder yeah 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 <laughs> so no it's i mean little things like this which again maybe are not the prettiest yeah um but again iterative process uh it, they do make a difference yeah and if it can kind of save one person from um severe injury or death like yeah. it Gosh, it's, of course it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. And we can tell, too, that this is older curb here. So this yeah. curb line is kind of old. This has been a narrow street for quite some time. And we can even see some almost like, you know, zero scaping that, that's yeah. going on down there. Just some nice wildflowers happening. But it, it, it brings up the point that mm -hmm. a lot of our side streets to these monster streets are actually yeah. narrower and, and have sure. the opportunity of yeah. being calm streets. And again, this is kind of like, you know, before this would have been like coming way over here yeah. to kind of yeah. allow those those turns yeah. those kind of you know someone yeah. uh, taking the turn almost at full speed and yeah. now we're really kind of forcing people to kind of pay attention you know to pay attention to take things a little bit slower so it's um, it, and it's it's helpful for drivers too no one wants to you know yeah. kind of make a mistake and kind of you know end up crawl, you know hurting someone or crashing into another car this kind of keeps everything a little bit more low key. Yeah, um, but, but but Nicole, when I drive, I love making fast turns. <laughs> tough. <laughs> tough, John, tough. I know. <laughs> yeah, and we still, you know, you have some conflict points um, at driveways and uh, parking lot entrances, but I think, you know, they've, they've done as much as they can do to kind of really promote right. But people watch out and let them know it's a crossing. Yeah. So far, I mean, honestly, it's been very, very comfortable rolling yeah. down this. We really, uh, we were lucky in that we did have a green wave there for several lights. And you do so. get that. So it's, you know, not so much coming north, but definitely south, it seems like mm -hmm. all the lights are timed really nicely. Right.
but we do have these left on green arrow only, mm -hmm. um, which sometimes works. Right. Most of the time works, but you still have to be aware. Right. Because a lot of people will just see that green dot. Yeah. And go. No, it takes time to learn. Yeah. And again, for these businesses here, we do see that yeah. they still have their parking, so parking yep. protected. Nice compromise. We are able to take care of that. I'm wondering, is it paid parking or is it free parking? No, it's paid parking. Yeah. yeah. I Fantastic. So. I just, just as I said I that, I saw the parking. <laughs> yeah, parking meters. Yeah, just, I, where it, I feel relatively safe on this. I mm -hmm. use it quite frequently. Sure. But the, the noise is an issue. I mean, yeah. which you can't really. What? <laughs> and so there are some days when I'm just like, oh, I may just take it back straight if I'm just not feeling yeah. the, the noise. But you know, yeah. it's nice to have a choice. Well, yeah, that's exactly what we were talking yeah. about earlier. It's not an either or, we no. need to do both. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. We need to make that commitment to putting in safe, authentically safe, you know, infrastructure mm -hmm. on these arterials. Absolutely. And uh, in addition to having parallel routes that are quieter, Absolutely. more relaxing, maybe more appropriate for all ages and abilities. Yeah. Well, we've seen that, you know, probably yeah. over half of our population says they're interested but concerned. Right. You know, so it, it is, it's, you know, we need to kind of address People who really don't want to be right next to traffic, even if you're separated. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, completely sidewalk grade, grade yeah. sidewalks would be great too. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people who will just put their bike on the back of their car and that's their, you know, and then go to a park and ride. Yeah. Because they don't feel safe. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, someone like that would definitely use infrastructure. Yeah. Um, not only if, they, if you have something like this, but if you have a way to get to it. Yeah. And, you know, and ultimately, this really, I don't even look at this and think of this as infrastructure for cyclists. I really look at this as infrastructure that just makes the entire environment yeah. incrementally just a little bit more livable for everybody. We rolled past Absolutely. some uh, rainbow crossing crosswalks back right. there. These are just little, indications little yeah, and you've steps. seen like there's someone doing a delivery yeah you know yeah before that would have been someone parked in a bike lane if it wasn't protected right you know yeah. so it's you know you have to accommodate for loading zones yeah um, exactly otherwise you're going to see um, issues and yeah. that, that was a great issue I mean he was yeah able to load right um, without blocking blocking the and really what we're talking about is making it safer, more convenient for everyone. everyone. And, you know, and, and, and that includes drivers. Yeah. Yeah. And delivery workers. Yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. tell you how many people like just that complain about driving just because they're so stressed out by it and everyone needs to get fast, mm -hmm. you know, go fast. And so I think, you know, and, but they're even like feeling they need to speed up and stuff because they are, feel like they're being kind of mm -hmm. forced by other drivers to kind of move along. Right, right. Um, so I think if it was more acceptable to be slower, yeah, um, people would enjoy that. And you know, we know that roads or uh, streets are safer for everyone, not just bicyclists when there's protected bike infrastructure. Yes, yeah. That's and really the reason this, why I wanted to point that out yeah. is that, yeah, we really, I mean, this makes it safer, more inviting for everybody, not just for people on bikes. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it creates more of a buffer between the sidewalk, so it's better for our pedestrians. So, yeah, I mean, this is a great stretch. We could have uh, stuff like this on all of our arterials, um, which are the ones primarily on the Denver's high end drain network. We're going to take a left right in here. Okay. All right. And now we're going to head north on Broadway and finished up our lunch.
Yeah, it's a little different um, rolling this direction. Yeah. Now we've got uh, the one-way traffic heading towards us. And, but so, because we're on the inside, um, yeah, it's... I mean, it's nice that you can see yeah. when the uh, hazards are kind of coming, like not yeah. having to look over your shoulder. Yeah. Um, but you also have to really pay attention to people exiting the parking lots and yeah. driveways because they're not necessarily looking in the right direction. Right, yeah. So we're going to take a right here. Okay. Another bike signal here. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, bike signal and a diverter. There's our diverter and our signal. Watch out, little crappie in here. Well, that one looks like it's been there a long time. That was one of the first ones. Yeah. Yes, I believe so, if my memory holds. Um, you know, it's it's one of those. I think it, they've had quite a few of the ballers replaced over the years. Oh, sure, uh, yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it does a fair job. Like I said, you'll still catch people kind of going yeah. around them, but there are enough of these kind of elements, like the traffic circles and the diverters, Yeah. that most people will just decide to take a different route. Yeah. Um, and since everyone is coming from a different place or going to a different place, it doesn't, you know, yeah. doesn't like create log jams on on parallel routes, you right, know, because right. everything just kind of disperses. Yeah, and we very casually rolled past another yeah. one of our little uh, um, traffic calming traffic yeah. circles. And here we've got another one of our little bulb outs and shortened yep. pedestrian crossings done with the flex posts. Again, great opportunities for changing driver behavior and. Yep eventually come back in and do permanent infrastructure That's the at idea. a later date. Uh, and here's it, some more. Know, it helps drivers get used to the idea too. Yep. Um, and you know, for good neighbors, I understand like it's not the prettiest stuff, you know, stuff accumulates yeah. in the, the uh, in the gutter area. But you know, I think if people know that it's temporary, uh, it makes it a little bit more palatable. Yeah. I don't even like using the word temporary. I prefer, you know, using the word um, like an interim step. Yeah. You know, it's just, that probably makes we're able, sense. you know, lighter, quicker, cheaper, we're able to put exactly. it in. We can adjust it. You mentioned that earlier. We can work on the angles and the dimensions and if we need to adjust, we can. Absolutely. But it's that interim step before we come back in and Right, and, and it fix makes, it up. And you know, these are very, they're pretty quick and cheap to build and they yeah. can make a huge impact. So yeah. why not do this stuff now? Yeah. Um, when you, you know, before you can build up the, the hard right. infrastructure. Yeah. Because even if it's not as good as concrete, it's still providing some benefit. Right. And so we'll have another little diverter up here. Yeah, this is a nice little iteration of it. Mm -hmm. Again, using that, we got a little bit of some dinosaurs painted in these. Yes. Yeah, I mean, why we've not? Seen that, let's you know, uh, we've let's seen dress that it up and have some fun. Exactly. Like take them under their, you know, under their wing and yeah. adopt them. Yeah. Uh, some of the traffic circles closer in my area have. You know, like Christmas decorations, they yeah. have uh, some fun stuff. Yeah. Now we've been rolling along this street here. We've had our traffic calming mm -hmm. aspects of it. We've had a couple of different diverters and we've had a couple of uh, different traffic circles. You can see. And of course we have our street, you know, with the sharrows in the middle of it. And normally you don't, we don't really, you know, advocate for the right. use of sharrows. But when you've already got a street that's pretty yeah. traffic calm, 
you kind of, th that's one example where it kind of makes sense. Yeah, and it makes sense yeah. too for navigating, for yeah. wayfinding. Yeah. So we're going to go straight across and yeah. then up on the path. Okay, cool. Yeah, because we are right at the yep. beginning of the Marion Street. Right. Alexis Bounds, yep. Marion yep. Street, protected yeah. bike lane. Yep. Yeah, protected bike lane. Okay, I'll follow you. But something like this, especially with trees on mm -hmm. the other side, would be kind of like the gold standard right. for you know what we would like to see ultimately. Yeah. Here, and you know, any chance you've got to plant more trees and provide a little bit more of a buffer. Yeah. Um, is great, and you're more, much less likely to get someone parking or driving on this than you would uh, something on street level. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And this is nice and wide enough. Mm -hmm. We see that we can share the space with pedestrians very easily. And again, we're rolling yeah, at nice, exactly. com comfortable speeds. We're not going too fast. Nope. So we're gonna cross here. Mm -hmm on the sidewalk, take a little right, and then we will go to this like access road. Okay. But yeah, this uh, first and spear, they prevent, you know, present so many difficulties in crossing. Yeah. So, and these are nice. Just to have the, the streets where, you know, it's one way for cars, but yeah. two way for bicyclists. Two ways for bicyclists, yeah. And beautiful big trees. Yes. Love it. And we're gonna take a right here. Well, and you can see there's the Noah bike infrastructure or even like shadow marks, but this is a nice like, low volume, low speed street yeah. that is pleasant to, to bike on. I mean, it's incredibly wide. Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> say, um, you know, this is, you, you can really tell when you kind of transition into sort of a different neighborhood mm -hmm. where different context, this is a much, yeah. much wider street. Absolutely, yeah. Given the, the historic nature of these houses, I'm wondering if this was actually a streetcar street. It, uh, you know, I, I don't know, um, but, I would bet you it be. was because look at this. This is know. So you know, wide. super wide, and look at the buffer yeah, with I mean, the nice, trees. A lot of times when you see streets this wide, yeah. they don't have sidewalks, but you have right. sidewalks here. Yeah, I bet you this was a um, right, sort let's of a. Take a yeah. No, let's keep going. One more street. One more. Sorry. But yeah, beautiful homes here. Yeah. Um, we're in the Country Club Historic yeah. District. I would not be surprised if this was a an on street. Uh, yeah, streetcar line they were everywhere yeah in uh, we're gonna take a left here. Denver and Boulder yeah now you get you're divided with sort of mm -hmm. a parkway yeah. feel to it with the, Some beautiful the center streets. and those running. nice and shady yeah Yeah, I know what you mean though. You know, we all obviously noticed that that was incredibly low volumes of motor vehicle traffic on that street, even though it was super, mm -hmm. super wide, still felt comfortable. But clearly some traffic calming would really help. Yeah, and there's, not, really there's not like a lot of through access over there. Yeah. So there's just not a lot of reason. I love yeah. going through this little. Uh, yeah, look at this. I'm gonna take a right here. <laughs> you know, you're entering the village. I know. <laughs> And again, you've got these little elements that just kind of scream to you that, yeah, these are neighborhoods of privilege. Yes, they are. And we're going to take a left. Yeah. We can go kind of go right where it says don't enter. Perfect. Nice. Williams and Forth. 
So we're right kind of, just north of us is, uh, is Cheeseman Park. Okay. Um, we're coming up to the a weird intersection that's had a lot of conflict over um, some traffic calming. Um, we'll pull off and kind of look at it if you want. But Deconstruct it a, a little. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there have been a few little tweaks to it, which okay. again is one of those uh, benefits of doing the interim yeah, yeah. Uh, infrastructure. Um, it, it, like, you understand, like, this is a beautiful neighborhood. I, I right. understand that these plastic posts are not gorgeous. Yeah, well. <laughs> but neither is having people yeah. injured on your street. Yeah. Well, there's a way to fix that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make a donation to the city for more robust, more right, beautiful exactly. materials for your neighborhood. Uh, that's not fair, but we are talking about aesthetics here. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what's important to you. Yeah. So this is six too. And you can see it's a one way, very wide. Yeah. Um, you get again. Pretty significant amounts Why, of traffic. city, why? Why do you insist on keeping it <laughs> multi-lane one way? Why, why, why? It's uh, kind of bizarre. Have the guts, change it. So, and this is kind Here of, we are. this is the beginning of the 7th Avenue uh, neighborhood bikeway, which we were on the very end of it. Yeah. Before, before the uh, Broadway bike lane. But you can kind of see what they've done here. I mean, it's just a very tricky intersection. Um, it's now there's a diverter okay. up here. And we can kind of pull off over here in the shade. Yeah. And look at it a bit. You see our buffered bike lane on that side. And our bike lane here. Hi there, you're good. Yeah. No, you're good. Nice. So yeah, this used to be two-way. Okay. Um, and they've they've made it so that there's a semi-diverter here, um, right. and it works pretty well. Um, people get a little confused. Right. Um, I've seen a lot of people come up this way, and they're literally just looking left, and they start turning this way, and then they have to kind of stop, and they realize that neither they go around it or through it, right. or they kind of change directions. But this is not a protected bike lane down here, but it's. It's very large and buffered. Right. So there's typically not too many interactions and it's pretty low volume and low speed for drivers. One thing I've noticed numerous times lately are people driving in the, uh, in the bike lane. Um, okay. Because it is so wide. Um, and it's typically kind of older drivers that are just kind of confused. Right. Um, and just not really understanding. So, perfect. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And again, we've seen 6th. This is 8th. It's another wide multi-lane street yeah. going west. Yeah. So there really is no reason to drive on this street. Right. Um, unless you live there. Right. Um, unless you have, have delivery to. there. Yeah. But then you don't need to be going through fast. And, right. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and it's not like ambulances are going to be taking this route for any, you know, an extended period of time yeah and they may have to for a block or two to get to where they're going sure but um yeah it's this is not for fast moving traffic and even if they did and they it's needed still, to yeah. use and if they needed to use the bike lane they could oh, slip absolutely. right yeah. through there they're, they're, and the, no, um, no the traffic circles which is one up at the next block yeah um they're meant to be mounted by right. by emergency vehicles so emergency that's vehicles. not gonna it's gonna not, not gonna stop anyone from getting to where they're they yeah. need to go and so at the end of the day, really the, the major pushback on this is just the aesthetics. aesthetics. Yeah. And the fact that, well, no one's been killed here before. Right. So we don't need it. Right. Yeah. Um, which, you know, pretty ridiculous to think that we would need a blood sacrifice on, on our streets to get sure. to, um, infrastructure improvements. Sure. Uh, and again, the, you know, this, this should be a people prioritized street. Right. I mean, you've, you've seen yeah. how many people yeah. use it. Um, there's plenty of other options for drivers. You're not, you know, you're not limiting um, that people can get to their homes. Sure. We've had 
people at the, we had a big meeting at this very spot and yeah. people were complaining like I had friends and they literally could not figure out how to get to my house. Right. It's, it's really not that, you know, not it's that really hard. not that difficult. Yeah. Um, especially when you've got two major streets on either side that yeah. you can use. Yeah. Um, so I do, like, I do well. wonder, you know, if cities had the ability to deploy in a situation like this, lighter, quicker, cheaper materials that weren't, you know, sort of these hot button issues of, of flex posts. If they had something in their toolbox that is just inherently beautiful, mm -hmm. if they could deploy, whether we'd see that same, you know, complaint or whether it would just be, no, we don't like it because it's changed. Right. This is, yeah. And we've, we've, um, we've experienced that a little bit too. You know, it's a, uh, they have a problem with something well like that, that's, you know, we're taking care of it by this. Well, then I have the, you know, it's like, it's just the, the grievance yeah. of the day. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's. Or being, yeah. you know, or, or you know, change, yeah, being, being empathetic with the fact that it is change and change, yeah, and change, change is, can be stressful it really, and, yeah. and difficult yeah. for people. Uh, you mentioned, you know, a, a couple of the elderly drivers having a hard time navigating it and getting used mm -hmm. to the change. Yeah. And, and I, I think we all need to have a little bit of space in our heart to, to be empathetic oh, with the fact that change yeah. is difficult, yeah. especially if it's something you've been driving on for 40 years. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, there was community outreach um, in this area. Maybe it wasn't enough. I think, you know, from what I've heard, there, there was plenty. Um, yeah. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't really kind of catch your attention unless it hits you in the face when it's going down and right. being installed. Yeah. Um, but, like, again, once people are used to this, yeah. it's beneficial for everyone. Yeah. I mean, and I would, I would love to have live on a street like this that had sure. much, you know, lower uh, car volume. and. Yeah. You, you therefore saw more, more people biking. Yeah. Um, and I think people will come to realize that. Yeah. We did have um, a crash at one of the um, traffic circles further mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people instantly blamed the traffic circle. Sure. But these were, it's a car full of, of teenagers drinking. Sure. Um, who knows what they would have hit if that traffic circle wasn't there. Sure. You know, yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if you're driving that recklessly that yeah. you, like, smash into a yeah. Rather large traffic circle. Yeah. Um, I would say you could easily, you know, plow into someone's home or car or some people easily. standing on the side of the road. Easily. So yeah. I think that's, you know, yeah. Yeah. you may see more of those kinds of crashes, but I would rather someone crash into a traffic circle than yeah. someone's house. Yeah. And going back to what we've been talking about quite a bit today, which is, you know, accepting and using these flex posts for what they are. They're lighter, quicker, cheaper. It's an opportunity to redefine the streetscape and the angles. Um, and yeah, absolutely. I could totally see this, uh, you know, a pavement removal process of, you know, mm -hmm. depaving and bringing in absolutely. more uh, planted yeah. natural surface area. We've yeah. got an entire area here that would be a wonderful little garden. Sure. Um, and so an opportunity to depave Absolutely. and plant some more green infrastructure in here, uh, making it truly beautiful. Yeah, and I mean, this is an affluent neighborhood, mm -hmm. but there are other neighborhoods that are desperately in need sure. of more green space that yeah. could, and who are, you know, also have more crashes yeah. in the, on their streets. So, yeah. I mean, this is a no brainer for a lot of, yeah. a lot of those neighborhoods. And yeah. So yeah. We'll, we're hoping to see more of these. Taking, taking donations and philanthropic if there you'd like go. to donate, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a couple million and we'll uh, yeah. uh, depave it and we'll there plant we a, a garden here the for you. Jack out here tomorrow. That's right, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We're saying this tongue in cheek, but I mean, we're really, yeah, I mean, it comes down the to point funding. is, is that using these materials give us the ability to fine tune the, the angles, the approaches, the lines. You can always come back in and, yeah. and you know, jackhammer it out and re, yeah. redo it. So. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, I mean, they came to a full stop. Yep. Sometimes a little confusion or sure. a little, like, actually helps people pay yep. a little bit more attention. Yep. And, you know, and you can appreciate this as a crossing guard, too, is that, you know, when we create intersections that are a little confusing, it's it's wonderful to see the reaction of slower speeds. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if the drivers slow down, crawl through, figure it out yeah even that's if they're, the whole yeah. point even if they're doing very, something very that they're confused and they're maybe yeah. not going the exact right way if you're doing it slowly yeah it's less likely to kind of have devastating yeah. effects so yeah yeah good stuff
Yay. All right. So, not much stage staging room. Right. But this li this was literally just a, about this big right. before. Um, and you can see we've got. So all this, this. is new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is supposed to be connecting with the protected bike lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. Then we're gonna turn up this uh, alleyway. Go right here. I love little alleys. I know. Well, <laughs> it helps you get off a big yeah. street. A lot of people do use 17th to ride. Um, there's a parking lane, which no one uses because yeah. you will get sideswiped. Um, but it also means people tend to speed more. We take yeah. a left here. Hi there. Okay, if we squeak through? Thanks. Uh, this is all part of like the storm water management. Uh, it's been going on for years. So this is a road that I ride on a lot. There's no bike infrastructure but I see tons of other people riding on it. It's just, you know, there's okay. Colfax one block south, 17th one block north. So this is like a perfect, you know, like low stress street yep. until there's traffic on Colfax or 17th and then you see the cut through okay. traffic. So, yeah. which is why we have asked for, you know, traffic calming some, along the yeah, street. Yeah, some so diverters, diverters here. Yeah, so, yeah the, the width is, is such that when there's car parking on both sides, it's super narrow. Yeah. So it's a de facto traffic calming in mm -hmm. and of itself. Yeah. And again, the only people that are really using this are local, you know, people, residents are making deliveries and they don't need to be speeding. Right. But yeah, plenty of trees, which makes it nice to, to bike around. Yeah, very delightful. Isn't it nice? Yeah, it's very nice. So little you, little homes, probably 1940s, 1930s, I would think. Yeah, a lot. There's a, a good mix here. Um, yeah. Some of them might be older, yeah. There's the one by us is like 1905, I believe. Okay. We'll, we'll take, a, take a left here. Yeah. And this is another, like, I've taken you some of the bike streets routes, too. Right, yep. Uh, from Avi's. From Avi, there. yeah. Check out Avi Stopper's Bike Streets yes. app. He's got that launched. Going straight across. But, yeah, we'll see numerous um, cars crash along this street. Mm -hmm. um, speed limit's 30. People go way faster seeing yeah. four vehicles uh, flip mm -hmm. on that on that one little stretch right um, there's a few blocks around the school yeah so you know I mean it definitely would help everyone well there's just no reason for four lanes no. I mean <laughs> no uh, we'll take a right here Yeah, I figured I'd just take you around the school so you can see yeah. where I do my thing. That's right. Well, and more and more places with like, you know, nice gardens and less lawn. Right. Is nice. Yeah. I don't know how people keep lawns. Yeah, the, the water saving yeah. aspect. Okay. Plant some wild flowers and some xeriscaping. We're gonna be taking a right then the quick left. Okay. Okay. That's my school. That's my this spot right there. Oh my gosh, there it is. <laughs> Where the magic happens. The magic happens. <laughs> and again, behold, see the you know nice narrow street, yep. car parking on both sides. You know, this this street just screams slow speeds. Yep. And there's the little ones. Fantastic, yeah. And then here's some of your equipment. Yep, and this again, just like really helps 
keep the visibility clear yeah. Um, yeah. over here. Um, I, I don't know what I would do without the cones because right. it's, you know, everyone thinks it's just for a second, it'll be fine. Yeah. Not real. I really don't pe think people realize yeah. how dangerous it can be. Um, yeah. So that's the issue. You know, it's if you don't think you're causing a problem, you're just going to do it. And, right. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's important to kind of reiterate that. And yeah. I think I'm going to try more to kind of ex um, write some stuff in the, in the newsletters for school to kind of yeah. explain some of these issues in little digestible bits yeah. um, so that uh, people can understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, I think most people have, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to explain right. it a little bit more. Yeah. And some of the, the cones are out of the way today because it's uh, street sweeping day. Okay. So I had to move the cones out so the street sweepers could come through. Ah. I will come through before my shift and move them all back. But you can see, like, I don't uh, know what's going on here at, at lunchtime, but it's yeah. uh, kind of cool to see everyone pulling up on bikes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, we've got a bike strapped to the front of that turn mm -hmm. there. Fantastic. Uh, and this is the one, uh, I would like to change this into a one-way. Okay. Because it's two-way, it goes to one way and another one way in front of it. Um, mm -hmm. And it just creates a lot of confusion and uh, people drive the wrong way down this side. Uh, and it's, this is really not um, wide enough for two um, rows of parked cars and two travel lanes, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when everyone's trying to pick up or drop off, mm -hmm. it can get kind of mm -hmm. uh, it can get blocked up to where the the crosswalks are blocked. Right. Um, and if we made it into one way, we could actually kind of do some bulb outs right. and things like that. With right now, I can't. Yeah. Um, even with the cones, yeah, um, yeah. because it's just too too tight. To yeah. Fit. Yeah. Has. Uh, the city of Denver done any tr any true school streets where uh, the street be in front of the school is just completely shut down to motor vehicle traffic? Not that I am aware of. Okay. Uh, I know we would love that. We would welcome sure. that. Um, I would love to see that um, done um, in like little segments even around schools so yeah. that, you know, it kind of acts as a diverter, but yeah. there's more room for trees and, you know, um, benches for people to wait. You know, right. A lot of people come early yeah. to pick up their kids and they end up sitting in their car. Right. Um, which if it's hot or cold out then you're letting the engine run. You know, we, yeah. we're trying to reduce idling around our school. But how nice would it be if you had like, you know, some benches yeah. and stuff for people to get out and kind of socialize yeah. while they're waiting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's lots of room for improvement. Well, Nicole, this has been so much fun. <laughs> oh, I've enjoyed it immensely. I really appreciate it. Uh, we've, we've ended our ride. We're here at your school here where you do your, your, your crossing duties. Uh, yeah, any, any final thoughts for the audience uh, based on what we saw today and uh, you know, the progress that you're seeing Denver make? Um, well, I think we've seen some good progress. I think there's a lot more to do. Um, and I, I really like to see us start around schools, parks, um, shopping areas, mm -hmm. you know, um, that makes the most sense because that's where people are wanting to walk and we can kind of promote those more efficient modes of travel and it yeah. helps everyone, even people who drive, yeah. um, would be glad to see more parking spaces, like not right. being taken up by someone who's yeah. driving, but yeah. um, walking and biking instead. Yeah. And uh, we were talking earlier that, hey, this might be a great opportunity here. We're panning along here. Maybe a future school street right mm. here. That's, Maybe a trial. Um, that's the dream. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always like. Well, you'd be out of, of a job. Time. Gladly. I will, <laughs> I will be. I, I even said this on my first day of, uh, of working here to the principal. Like, yeah. my ultimate goal is to make this area so safe that you don't need me anymore. And he Perfect. was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> like, I, it's not going to happen anytime soon. But that's, that's the ideal, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, I really, when you think about needing someone to come out and stop drivers from yeah like you know from yeah. cutting off kids in the in the crosswalks it's kind of silly yeah. like you know it, we should have infrastructure that doesn't rely on me yeah. being out here to yeah. holding up a paddle yeah um, it should be intuitive it should be kind of make a lot of sense that this is where you slow down this is yeah. where you you, you know, watch for children um, and it's like having the raised crosswalks having the bulb outs um, you know, easing some of the 
the um, issues at the intersections with visibility um, would would yeah. be immensely helpful. Yeah. Well, this crowd is gathering, so you might have to go to work early. So know, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna turn you loose. Uh, Nicole, thank you once again for uh, showing us around here I'm in glad. Denver. I, I always love showing people uh, my city, my adopted city. Um, so yeah, I, I like the direction that Denver's going, and I'm really invested in a lot, as a lot of us are, um, with Denver Bicycle Lobby and some of the other advocacy groups. And um, yeah, we're here for the long haul and to see Denver be a more equitable. Um, easier place to get around on foot and bike. Yay! Yeah, cool. In transit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. YouTube super thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up, and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.